I woke up this morning to a bit of fallout here on the channel by an attacker. Uh, clearly someone who's got this second channel, I think I know who it is, is one of the false prophets. He's got many false channels. And, uh, so he, and sometimes he uses German words to try to sound smart, I think. Or maybe aggressive, who knows. And this one uh, is called Mein Land. Land, uh, land, the word land in English comes from the German Land. And so Mein Land, my country. Um, this person, he didn't start out uh, necessarily aggressive at the beginning, uh, but uh, the Lord said, click his name. Yeah, right when I got up, I mean, I was looking at it in, in bed on my phone at first. And then I got up and I, I went on my computer and looked at it and was going to respond to one of his comments. And the Lord said, click his name. And I clicked it and I'll show you what I found. <clears throat> but right now, what I want to do is just walk through some of the comments. So I'm going to go ahead and start recording over here on my other machine uh, without microphone. There we go. And uh, let's see. So now, there we go. All right. So. I'm hoping it'll work because Firefox, and I've had some troubles with that in Firefox. So here it is. It says, the title is confusing. This is the video, do not worry about what you will eat, drink, or wear. Serve only God. What's confusing about that? He says, the title is confusing. We should worry about what we wear if we see how most people are dressed. Dot, dot, dot. But he didn't say anything else. I say uh, context determines uh, the constraint on the meaning of the words. In this case, there is a context to that title. This defines what is meant by worry. It means not to be anxious over not having good enough clothes or not having any clothes at all once the ones we are wearing wear out. Uh, it does not mean to not pay attention to dressing with propriety rather than like a whore. That is a different meaning of worry and is not read uh, from the context at all about birds and lilies of the field. There's no indication that Jesus was referring to the flowers and the birds whoring themselves around. That's what I wrote. He didn't reply. Nothing. Zero. Next thing he wrote was on, can I drink alcohol as a Christian, um, part three. Then we should admit that Christianity is a Mediterranean slave religion and the Bible is not reliable it also says Jesus drank wine, so we can conclude Jesus sinned. So clearly he's not a, a Christian. Clearly he doesn't believe in God. Clearly he doesn't fear God. And clearly he doesn't believe Jesus is the Savior of humanity. From that one statement. And he doesn't believe the Bible, of course, as well. He says the Bible's not reliable. I said... I challenged another person as well on this point. Where does the Bible say objectively that Jesus drank wine? What do you mean specifically a Mediterranean slave religion? Christianity originated in the Mediterranean, so you are a master of the obvious on that point. You are trying to use a universally accepted fact as a slander against Christianity, but how is it a negative thing? You are anti-Semitic? Oh, there's more. Uh, do you mean it was a religion restricted to the slave class? I'm going to have to put my glasses on because it's still morning. <laughs> okay, eyes are a little weak this morning. Do you mean that, that it, it was a religion restricted to the slave class? Have you read Philemon? It is a plea to a slave owner who was a Christian in the Brotherhood to accept back without punishment a runaway slave who was also a Christian in the Brotherhood and to treat each other as brothers in Christ regardless of their stations in the society. Slavery was not created by Christians. You would know that if you knew your Bible or general archaeology at the university. The Egyptians enslaved other groups of people out of this population not only uh, uh, out of this population of not only Hebrews, Moses led a new people into the desert to freedom. The biblical religion is a religion of freedom, not slavery. The society continues to revert to enslaving human beings, as in the second time the Jews were enslaved and taken off to Babylon. It was neither Jews, uh, it was neither Jews nor Christians, who did not exist yet, who were enslaving human beings. It was the Babylonians. They did not follow the Jewish religion, and the Christian religion did not yet exist. 
Also, the Babylonians were not Mediterranean. This enslaving of human beings had nothing to do with the Jewish religion of the Old Testament, nor exclusively with Mediterranean people groups. As for your statement that the Bible is unreliable, who is the one making that judgment? You? Are you a linguist with decades of studies in ancient languages and over three decades of ministry as pastor and missionary, excelling beyond all in logic and linguistics? Have you actually looked at and studied the original manuscripts or fragments with an underpinning of education for that study to mean something? Have you, with your linguistic training and long history of preparation, then translated books of the Bible and compared the language and mes message? Or have you made this judgment based on a superficial reading of the translations in English, like the King James Version, New International Version, New American Standard uh, Bible, etc.? You may think that what you read in these translations cannot possibly be mistranslated, but if you would refrain from your self-authoritative judgment made out of ignorance and watch many of my 300-plus in-depth studies from the original language, you might gain just enough knowledge to make a sober view of the issues at hand. I challenge you to do exactly this. Very extensive, uh, very long reply to him. He doesn't care. He really doesn't care. So part of that is just testing him to see how he responds to truth. So he wrote, uh, he wrote, okay, then you are right, and he never drank wine about Jesus. Neither O-D-I, I don't know what, did, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I am just surprised you unlocked my comment. When I signed out, I didn't see it. And I wrote back, I moderate everyone's comments to begin with. Also, I am in Europe, so the time difference can be interesting. I said, life is full and also has enough troubles without the troubles that come with alcohol. And he wrote back, absolutely. But if I look at your other videos, it is not merely about alcohol. You are pretty much calling everything a sin. Perhaps breathing will soon be a sin, too. Now I know why people are leaving Christianity. It is the same problem as with Islam. All right, so I wrote, so you do not sin? Or, you are, are, or are you of the apostate churches who do not really think sin is a relevant issue for Christians, since Christ forgives all sins, quote, past, present, and future, which of course is a lie. Do you hold to that doctrine that we cannot help but sin as long as we are in the body? And then that's when the Lord said, click on his name. I'm going to click on the name, then I'll come back and read the last comment I wrote. We'll have a look at his uh, channel here. There's one video he posted, as you can see here. Uh, you see his, uh, the name of his channel is Mein Land, and it has some sort of uh, political button that you wear you know, for a campaign that's black, white, and red. Uh, as you know, the, the uh, German flag has yellow, right? Uh, so anyway, it's all in German, and I won't get into that. But there's one video on the channel. The channel was started in 2013, like the other fake channels of this prophet, this false prophet, uh, same year, the other channels. So I'm, I'm guessing it's him. And this video is three seconds long. That's it, three seconds. And it's a static shot of um, a bunch of thumbnails of my videos in two rows, as you can see. That's what that is. And it says, cult leader, the rooted word, Ron Craig. Posted 12 hours ago. It's now 11 a.m. Um, Kiev time. And it was posted 12 hours ago, so that would be 11 p.m. Kiev time, which would be like 1 p.m. Um, Pacific time in America, LA. So, and if you click on this, oh, and, and under it, it, what he wrote in the description says, worship him, exclamation mark. All right, so let me replay it and just pause it. And so it's got the Christian alcohol series. It's the latest um, videos uh, that I've posted. So it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, it's 12 of them. And that's it. It's just a static thing with the description, worship him, exclamation mark, calling me a cult leader. So I reported him for cyberbullying, 
and also told them that he is committed to crime by slander. And um, because it is slander, when you call someone a cult leader who has absolutely zero signs of a cult leader, also he doesn't have the authority to make a decision like that. He's not a psychologist, sociologist, uh, and he's not a criminologist. So, and cult leader would fall in those areas. Okay. So he's slandering me because he disagrees with me. He hates the Bible. He hates Christians. He hates God. He hates Christ. We saw that. What do you do with this? Well, I banned him from the channel, of course. So, and I wrote that on that comment. You can see here. You are banned from the channel. I have reported uh, your, your two-second video. The only video on your channel is bullying. But beyond that, uh, since you do not believe there really is a God, you will not have any fear that you are interfering with the teaching of the gospel of his Son, Jesus Christ, by attacking his servants. They did that to the prophets of old as well, spilling their blood to silence God. It won't work. That's what I wrote. Um, nice to wake up to. <laughs> nice to wake up to on the channel. Um, what was he hoping to achieve with that? You know, I mean, ask yourself, what was his purpose of putting a two or three second video of 12 of my thumbnails on his fake channel calling me a cult leader and saying, worship him? What was the purpose of that? What do you think he was hoping to achieve? What would it achieve? It would achieve in people going and looking at my channel. <laughs> That's what it would achieve. You know, he didn't put a link to the channel. So, but if people typed in, if let, let's just experiment, I'll show you here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in the rooted word, Ron Craig, into the search bar. Let's see what comes up. Oh, I put it in Google. Let's put it in um, YouTube. Put it up here and go here. Okay, so the first thing that comes up when you put those two together is his video. So the next ones that come up are my videos. So you can see here, the cult leader, the rooted word, Ron Craig. Worship him. And then you've got one of my hymns comes up next. Clear as a bell, which is nice. That's a very nice hymn. I like that. Who Would You Trust? About Tim Henderson. Then you've got another hymn. Glorious Savior, lead us on. Be for us our strength and song. Sounds very cultic, doesn't it? Like, come follow me and come worship me. Absolutely not. You are the son of the living God, broken and wounded, and gave your blood, sacrifice of Christ. And as you know, as I've said from the very beginning of this channel, I'm not out to start a church. I'm not out to start a, a new reformation or a movement or organization. I don't take donations. I don't take any money from anyone ever in ministry. I never have. And so for someone to call me a cult leader, it's like calling the person who is the most upright in ministry a cult leader. I'm trying to be the most upright minister who's alive. Now, I'm, I may not be, I probably am not, but I'm trying to be. And I'm being very careful in all aspects in how I handle the Word of God through the Scriptures how I manage my messages to you, how I manage my comments to you by hearing God and what he says, you should comment to this person more sternly or you should comment to this person more gently. And he guides me in the amount and measure that I use in commenting, replying to you all. This is how careful I am in ministering to you. As for the unbelievers 
who come and assault on the channel. I, I do have patience with them. And as you can see, I replied to the guy's comments of unbelief. I addressed each one of them carefully. One of them uh, I did address with, it's not exactly mockery, but it's like putting him in his place. Because he's making a decision that the Bible is unreliable, but he's not a biblical scholar, and he's not a linguist, and he's not a professional in ancient languages. And he hasn't done the translation work like I've done. And so, what is his authority? What is his place for saying the Bible is unreliable? Because he read Richard Dawkins one day? So, yeah. This, this is, you know, again, addressing the way that God leads to address. Not just the way that I hear or feel in my head. Because a lot of people call that God. Well, if you call your conscience God, then you're worshiping yourself. You have to be careful about that. You have to distinguish between God speaking to you, which is distinct, very distinct. And you thinking for yourself, even if it's different from the way that you normally think. We do think differently from the way we normally think, from time to time, now and then, different times of day even we do. And so be careful about calling that different kind of thinking God. Or the insight, because we get insight even when we sleep. When we sleep, our mind is working putting things together, unraveling things, piecing puzzles together, you know, figuring things out. I've come up with solutions while I've slept. So when I was in astrophysics, I came up with solutions while I slept, for example. The, the mind works while you're sleeping. So just because you wake up with an idea that's a solution to something you had before that you didn't solve yesterday doesn't mean that's from God. It doesn't mean it's not but it doesn't mean it's from God. So you need to be careful about calling something from God, just as careful as a prophet calls something from God. You need to be careful. Anyway, you can see the kind of issues I deal with. I'll show you, to contrast, I'll show you um, another one who came at the same time commenting. That's this um, Oscar Hamilton. And I thought, hold it, wasn't there an Oscar Hamilton with a C? O-S-C-A-R, who commented, so I searched there was a Hamilton, but not Oscar Hamilton, uh, Patrick Hamilton. So he says on divorce, he says, uh, you are terribly wrong. The only exception is if your wife was divorced herself, then you must divorce her. Jesus said, except for fornication, not except for adultery. And um, I said, you probably think you wrote crystal clear, but it is unclear what your problem is with the video. Can you clarify what you're trying to say? There was no reply yet. Okay. And um, yeah, so he wrote that 12 hours ago. I wrote that 10 hours ago. Then he commented nine hours ago down here. So he's been back after I wrote that and didn't say anything. So he didn't reply to that because he's been back down here in, in the next comment. He replied nine hours ago, which is after 10 hours ago. So he didn't respond to me on that. So he's just trying to show off, maybe. I have never uh, drunken alcohol in my life. I'm 29 and I have never missed it. Science confirms clearly that there is no safe level of drinking alcohol. Therefore, I agree with this message. So he agrees with the message, not because of the Bible, but because of science. I said, so science is the authority over your life, or is God the authority over your life? It seems like the former. And I wrote, I'm glad you have uh, live, lived an abstinent life regarding alcohol. And have you been so disciplined with your sexual, sexuality as well? It is an area too many people do not control and it is at the core of intimacy with the opposite gender when we marry. If you uh, deaden that instrument of intimacy, it can be a source of sorrow in the marriage. He wrote, um, it can be both. 
since science and God once used to, to agree? No, it didn't. Science has not agreed with God. In fact, many pastors who were scientists were fought against by the scientists who hated Christianity. They didn't care about God. But here's the other thing, is that science comes out of the Great Rebellion. So, science and God cannot agree. And then the next one, it says, Disciplined with my sexuality, I am, just like, in, just like all my... I am, just like all my older siblings, I am already married, and we have kids despite me only being 29. That doesn't mean he's disciplined in his sexuality. And I wrote, married can be undisciplined with sexuality. Did he write back? It says that YouTube is screwed up. There are many problems with the interface on YouTube I won't go into, but one of them is show more replies. It'll say that when... You click it and click it and click it and click it, it never loads up. Sometimes if I go into the mobile version, it'll load up something down there. Sometimes not. Sometimes there's just not something down there. It's on the verge of where it needs to have that. So I don't think there's any reply yet. But who knows? Uh, there was another comment by this guy. Yeah, it's under here. Under Alyssa's comment. There it is. All right, so Mein Lant, he says, uh, then Christianity is a confusing religion. I'm not sure what he's referring to there, what, who's, what he's uh, responding to. All right, so, yeah, Christianity is a confusing religion. I d I'm not sure what comment he's responding to because I have many comments under hers. And so, and that's, again, YouTube's fault. YouTube doesn't, doesn't clarify which comment he hit reply on. And I've got five replies of my own. Which one did he reply to? I don't know. And so um, then he writes the rooted word, uh, if drinking wine at all without getting drunk is a sin, well, he doesn't believe in the sin. He doesn't believe the Bible's reliable. He doesn't trust God. So why would he be here talking about sin? If drinking wine at all without getting drunk is a sin, then number one, obeying Jesus a bit without obeying him totally is good enough. <laughs> Why is that? Obeying Jesus a bit? Like, how much a bit? That's again that question of how close can I walk to the curb? without getting smacked in the head and thrown into the street and run over by a car or slipping off the curb and getting run over by a car. How close can I walk before something bad happens? Number two, Jesus himself is a sinner since he drank wine himself. I challenged him on it and he didn't give any proof. Instead he says, oh, okay, so Jesus didn't drink wine. So he wasn't being sincere there. He is a liar. He is a liar. Because he said, okay, Jesus didn't drink uh, wine. And now he's saying, Jesus himself is a sinner since he drank wine himself. And he says, you are a perfect cult leader. Perhaps you will become the next Jim Jones. No thanks. No thanks what? No one's asking him to do anything except follow Jesus. And if he doesn't want to follow Jesus, he doesn't want to follow Jesus. But he knows from the videos here the consequences of that. You all know from that. Because I'm constantly calling people to stop sinning. Christian and non-Christian, stop sinning. Revere God. If you don't revere God, you're not doing what you must do. Whether you, whether you love him or not, if you're not revering God, you're not doing what you must do. He is king. No matter whether you follow him or not, he is king. And if you don't treat him that way, then that's a problem for you. 
whether you call yourself a Christian or not, you must obey him. And that's what's going to be the deciding factor in the judgment. And that's why it is binding on all, regardless of whether you call yourself a Christian or not. It is binding on all to treat God as king, be subject to him and obey him. And those who do not will be judged as wicked and thrown into the burning lake of sulfur with irrevocable judgment. Those who do obey God will be judged as righteous and rewarded with eternal life and go to the city of God, the New Jerusalem. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website, The Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles we've posted. It's at therootedword.com, therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.